This is the live demo of the real-time chat application I just built with React and Firebase. And what's amazing about it is that it took me only five minutes to build. How crazy is that? Today, I want to teach you how to build this amazing application from scratch. In this video, you will learn how to authenticate users using Firebase and how to work with real-time data using Firestore and React Notes. And if you watch the video up to the very end, you will also learn how to deploy and host your app for free. So stay with me guys until the end. We are going to learn so many things in just 5 minutes. And the app we are going to build in this video is live, so feel free to check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. So let's jump right into it. What's up guys, this is Greg with AlterClass, helping you learn the right skills to land your dream job as a software engineer. And if you are new here, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Altair Class to not miss my next videos. Before we get started, let's have a quick look at what we are building today. It's a simple but powerful chat application that everybody can use to communicate using text messages. It's like a Discord server or a Slack room with a single channel. To enter the chat and interact with people, the user must log in using his Google account. Once logged in, the user can read the previous messages from the chat and start chatting by sending messages. All messages are stored in the Firestore database and are synced in real time with our React application. So let's get started. I will set a timer and in just 5 minutes you would have an up and running real time chat application. And remember, at the end of the video I'll show you how to deploy your app for free in 3 easy steps. So stick with me till the end and you'll get the live application. First of all, we'll need to create a new React application. For that, we are going to use the Create React App tool to set up our application with just one command line. So let's go ahead and run that command with the name of our application, React Fire Chat. Once it's done, we can install the dependencies to work with Firebase, which is the Firebase JS SDK. Now let's go ahead and open our app.js file and remove all of the boilerplate call already in place. Then import the Firebase SDK along with Firestore for our database and Firebase auth for user authentication. Finally, we need to initialize Firebase in our app by passing in the Firebase project configuration. To get this configuration, we need the Firebase project. So let's go ahead and create one. To create a new Firebase project, head over to the Firebase console. Click Add Project and follow through the steps. Then to allow users to sign in using their Google account, we need to enable the Google sign in method from the authentication page for our project. And to use Firestore as our database for storing messages, we need to enable it from the Cloud Firestore page. Finally, the last thing we need to do is to add a new web app to our Firebase project. Once you are done, you should get a JavaScript object representing the configuration of the Firebase project application you just created. So go ahead and copy this configuration object and pass it into the initialize app in your source code. All right, now we should have everything we need to build our chat application. We created a React application, the Firebase project, and linked the two together. So let's build the views of our application. But first, let's see how our application is structured and break the UI down into a component hierarchy. In this application, if the user is logged in, we show the chat with the list of messages. Otherwise, we show a button to sign in with Google. In addition to our main app component, we have three other React components to create. One for the sign in and sign out buttons one for the channel that contains the list of messages, and the one for the messages themselves. So let's start with the sign in button. This component is pretty straightforward. It's a simple button that accepts an onclick prop. From the app component, we can now render it and implement the onclick event handler. In this event handler, we're starting the sign in process by using the Google Auth provider from Firebase. We then set the language to the user preferred language, and we call the sign in with pop-up method to prompt the user to sign in through a pop-up window. Now we have a way to check if the user is authenticated. In this case, we don't show the sign-in button, but instead, we let him enter the chat directly. We can quickly get access to the authenticated user from Firebird through the alt.currentuser property. But as with many applications, you will also want to know whether your user are currently signed or sign out of your application. Firebase provides a method called on-auth state changed, which allows you to subscribe to the user's current authentication state and receive an event whenever that state changes. Setting such an event handler is something we should do inside the useEffect React hook, as it is a side effect. 
This method returns a function we can use to clean up our subscription whenever our component unmount. One more thing. The on-off state change listener is asynchronous and will trigger an initial state once a connection with Firebase has been established. Therefore, it is crucial to set up an initializing state that blocks our main application from rendering while the connection is established. After a user signing for the first time, a new user account is created and stored as part of your Firebase project. It can be used to identify your user across every app in your project, regardless of how the user signs in. Great, now let's add a sign out button to allow the user to sign out from our app. To sign out a user, we can just call the sign out method from this Firebase SDK. And as we have set up a listener to listen for any authentication changes, the user state should be updated automatically and set to null, triggering a render of our app, which now display the sign in button again. Now let's jump into creating the channel component. This one is responsible for displaying the chat messages and an input field to allow the user to send new messages to the chat. But first, we need to set up our Firestore database from the Firebase console. Cloud Firestore stores data within documents, which are contained within collections. In our case, we'll store the chat messages of our user within a messages collection. Let's go ahead and also create our first document within this collection. For now, we just add two fields into this new document. The text of the message itself and a timestamp representing the date and time when the message has been created. Great, that's all we need. Let's go back to our application. So let's start by creating a state variable to store our messages. Querying data is a side effect. So we'll fetch the messages from within the use effect hook. Cloud Firestore provides the ability to read the value of a collection or a document. This can be done in one shot or by listening to real-time updates when the data within a query changes. In our case, we are only interested in real-time updates. The way we do it with Firestore is by setting up an active listener to react to any changes to the query we want to perform using the onSnapshot method with an event handler callback. To watch the messages collection for any changes, we create the following query. We get the reference to the collection, order it by the created add property, and finally, we limit the number of messages returned from the query. Now that we have our query, we can set up our event listener with the onSnapshot method. It also returns a function allowing us to unsubscribe from events to clean up our side effects when the component unmounts. Once a query has returned a result, Firestar returns a query snapshot. These snapshots provide the ability to actually get the data we requested through our query. To access all the documents returned by our query, we can just get it from the docs property of the query snapshot and loop over it to get the data for each document alongside the document ID. Finally, we update our state and render the messages. So if we create a new message in our Firestar collection, we should see it automatically appear on the screen. All right, now let's have the ability to create new messages from our React application. To achieve that, we can create a form with a single input field inside our channel component and implement the onSubmit event handler to add the new messages to our Firestore database. It's actually pretty easy to do as we already have everything in place. Again, we are using the messages collection reference from the Firebase SDK and call the add method by passing in an object representing the data of the new message. So we have the text itself, the created add timestamp. Here we let Firebase setting the value using a server generated timestamp. And then we have the user ID, the user display name, and his photo URL. We get this information from the parent component through props. And we update the state variable. Here you go. Now our user can post messages and other can read them in real time. One more thing. Now that we are attaching user information to each message, let's add the photo and name of the user next to each message on the chat. To do so, we can create a last component called message to render each individual message from within the channel component. This component is responsible for formatting and rendering the message data. So we have the user's photo and display name, the creation date that we convert to a more readable format using the date FNS library, and finally, we have the text of the message. So now you have a powerful real-time chat application built with React and Firebase. I know what you're thinking right now. The application looks terrible. There is no way our user is gonna use it like that. So let's use our magic CSS wand and turn this awful app into something like this. Much better, right? That's not a video about CSS, so I'll save your time and energy and link the source code in the description below. I don't even use and write plain CSS anymore for my React applications. In fact, I'm using Tailwind CSS to rapidly add style to my apps. It is one of those tools that once you start using it, you can't stop using it. 
I promise, Tailwind CSS is such a life changer. If you'd like me to create a video or tutorial about it, please let me know in the comment section below and have a look at the GitHub repository for the source code of the app we just built. All right, at the beginning of the video, I told you that if you stick with me, I'll show you how to deploy this application in three easy steps for zero dollar. So let's go ahead and see how to do it. There are plenty of hosting providers out there, but today we are going to use Netlify. If you don't know Netlify yet, go check it out. That's a powerful and easy to use platform to host and deploy your web applications in minutes. In only three steps, your app is up and running. So start by creating an account. And once logged in, create a new site from Git and connect your GitHub account to pick the repository for the app you want to deploy. And finally, just hit the deploy button. Well done. Now your application is live and you can start sharing it with the world. That's it. That's all it takes to create and deploy a powerful application using React and Firebase. Now I invite you to go a step further and add more features to it. For example, you could implement an AI powered moderation strategy and include it to your app to moderate users' messages automatically and ban the ones that break your community guidelines. You could also add payments to your application using tools like Stripe, for example. You got the point here. Possibilities are endless. This application is just a starting point. Grab the source card and work from there to build your own application. And if you need to learn more about building modern application using React, go check out my course on Alter Class. My course will teach you everything you need to master React, become a successful React developer, and more importantly, get hired. In this course, I will teach you all the concepts you need to work with React. You will get tons of hands-on practice through quizzes and programming assessments. And you will build real-world projects on your own. Plus, you will be part of a growing community of learners. So go to alterclass.io, enroll in my course, and start building an amazing portfolio of powerful React applications. All right, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video up to the very end. I really hope that this video was useful for you guys. Please share it with your friends and colleagues or whoever may be interested in building React applications. And if you have not yet subscribed, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I release a new video. Thank you. We'll see us soon.